Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, Fiji First Leader rules out Sadelpa Coalition. Election pre-polls begin around Fiji. And police helps people to stop rumour mongering. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama says his party can never work with Sadelpa and its leader Siti Veni Romboka. Both leaders today appeared during the much-awaited debate on Radio Fiji 1's talkback show Navake Kelly. Following the show, Rumbuka said he was willing to work with Fiji First in the future, a notion that Mbaini Marama has put to bed, saying his party will never work with Rumbuka. Anna Ravulo reports. Sadelpa leader says they're open to working with Fiji First come 15th November, but only as a junior partner. But it's not uh, new when you li listen to the ideals, uh, the uh, development pro uh, aims, uh, we all for development and uh, we all for, it's just a way of doing it. So I can, uh, he can come and be a junior, junior partner in my, in my party, in my government. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Ban Morama says he can never work with Rambuka or Sudelpa. No, no, I don't have time for Sudelpa. Look at the policies. The policies is, is, uh, is discrimination. I can't work with people like that. Bani Marama says that Rambuka keeps avoiding several issues that were put to him. Well, he is a snake. In my book, he is a snake. See, he is he's not telling the truth about what transpired. Because of him, the other half of our population were beaten. Most of them left this country because of this fella. He's not telling us the truth. And if you listen to what he said over the many, many weeks past, his interviews, that has not changed. So we better be aware of this fellow here. Yeah. I accept that, that yeah, there his personal, personal views. He's been hurt, and uh, and I accept that he's been hurt. And I've uh, gotten rid of my hurt, and I'm moving forward. Both leaders touched on the topic of national minimum wage, the name Fijian, a land bank, and also took questions from the public. More than 6,000 people were tuned in via Facebook to watch the debate live with more than 59,000 views. The replay of the debate will air on FBC TV on Wednesday at 10 p.m., on Friday at 9 a.m., and on Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Anna Rovulo, FBC News. A 69-year-old man defied all odds to walk three miles to cast his vote in the village of Nalindi Nakorotumbu Ra. Living in a settlement far away from the Nalindi polling station, Filimoni Vosanduandua walked for three hours to be one of more than 60,000 Fijians to cast his vote during the week-long pre-polling period. Ali Kimbia with the story. Waking up early in the morning and reaching the pre-poll venue on time to make his vote count, Filimoni Vosanduandua was a happy man after casting his vote. I was so happy that I voted today. There was a lot of new processes, but I am happy that I finally cast my vote and my voice is heard because I voted for the party that I know will bring good things. Despite the AIDS barrier, Vosanduandua made sure that he was at the launch of free polling and the Fijian Elections Office were also there to witness the process. Free poll will take place today right up until 10th November. Voters who are voting under free poll are required to vote only in the pre-poll areas which they are assigned to. Nalinde village is one of the many rural communities part of the pre-poll and when FBC News arrived at the village, the people were eager to make their voices heard. This is a proud moment for this village and I am happy that I voted. I am happy that I am the first person to vote in this village. Behind me is the polling station here at Nalindi village in the Koratumbu in Ra. In 2014, over 40 voters casted their vote in this polling station. However, with pre-polling starting today, more than 100 voters are expected to cast their vote in this polling station. Ali Kimbia, FBC News.
Day one of pre-polling has ended with 109 polling venues completing polling as of 4.20 this afternoon. The first polling venue to start pre-poll today was Nanoko in Keasi, Nandronga, with 340 voters casting their vote. The FEO's preliminary report reveals there was 65% voter turnout. In the Central Division, 14 venues completed pre-polling, but the FEO only managed to receive information from seven venues due to connectivity issues. For the West, 28 venues completed pre-polling, but information was received from only 23 venues. 25 venues in the Northern Division completed pre-polling today, but only seven venues were able to send information through. 42 venues completed pre-polling in the Eastern Division. Um, we noticed that a few voters were late today, ladies and gentlemen, since it's daylight saving. We invite voters to please correct their watches and turn up to polling stations on time so that they do not miss out. The full schedule for voting on pre-poll is available on our website, our Facebook pages, as well as it is being advertised on radio stations uh, all day, um, in the, in every day until pre-poll co concludes. Eleanor Tarangaiview now joins us live from the Fijian Elections Office. Eleanor, what is the latest from the elections headquarters? Jackie, here again with me this evening is the Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohamed Sanim, to give us an update on a, a postal ballot. I understand that the breakdown of voters has changed. Uh, yes, uh, the Fijian Elections Office has uh, concluded uh, its qu quality assurance uh, of the postal applications process and uh, we have uh, found around 400 plus uh, postal applications uh, in the application system that uh, were not processed and we have under section 6 of the Electoral Act I have directed that these applications be processed and immediately dispatched to voters. So the figures for the 2018 general election slightly change uh, considering that. And uh, so the total number of postal voters now stands at 11,227. And this brings the, postal, uh, the polling day voters, the number of voters eligible to vote on polling day to 550,220. And pre-poll comes to uh, 69,472. So these are the new figures uh, when it comes to elections uh, this year. Thank you, Mr. Sanim. And uh, Jackie, just before I leave, just a quick uh, brief of the, the total, uh, the, sorry, the pre-polling for tomorrow. Um, 142 venues will be opening, uh, open rather, for pre-polling. 23 in the Central Division, 47 in the Eastern Division, 30 in the North, and 42 in the West. There's an expected voter turn of, uh, rather, voter, uh, Voters to turn up tomorrow are expected will be around 16,532, and that will be about 3,228 in the Central Division, 4,729 in the East, 3,601 in the North, and 4,974 in the Western Division. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Eleanor. The Fiji police force has come out strong to silence rumors being spread by some politicians to stir fear amongst the public that a coup is likely to take place post-election. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio says nothing of this sort will happen and the force will ensure the November 14th poll is carried out in a democratic manner. Akusita Tale reports the rumors have been received from the Western Division and on the island of Ovalau. I want to assure the people of Fiji to go out uh, and cast their votes uh, on the 14th and enjoy the 15th. They will be the police commissioner has raised his concerns about lies that have started to spread around the country in the build-up to next week's election. Well, I can assure the people of Fiji that we are postured uh, for uh, any security situation that we arise. And also uh, we've been in close consultation uh, with our military counterparts. Uh, especially with the commander Ahmed, uh, that they have a responsibility as well. The police chief today also received information that people in Levuka have been receiving reminders to stock up on shopping this week to prepare for the worst. It's good that it's been brought to my attention now and I want to assure the people of Levuka uh, that no such thing will happen. RFMF Chief of Staff Brigadier General Chone Kaluniwai has given assurance they will step in to assist the police if need be. The army will, uh, will stand uh, ready to assist and support the police if they require that assistance. And that has to come from the Commission of Police to the Commander. 
Meanwhile, the police commissioner says there will be a high visibility of officers on the ground on election night as the country waits for polling results. Akosit Tale, FBC News. With only nine days left for the general election, political parties are going the extra mile to pitch their policies to ordinary Fijians in the hope of securing some voters to form the next government. Hot on the agenda promises to make life easier. Tonight, Rachel Nath looks at the affordability of the promises and analyzes the reality versus the theory behind the possibility of more savings. The National Federation Party has created quite a big stir with promises of making 23 items vet-free or zero-rated. So we've done the math tonight and what this means for an average family of five in a week is that they will need two kilos of rice and flour, cooking oil, two cans of fish, tea, milk, butter, some noodles, two kilos of potato, a kilo of onions, some garlic, three cans of tuna, a dozen eggs, five loaves of bread and two number 17 chicken. At the cheapest advertised price on the current vet rate of 9%, this family would spend $71.64. Now if the NFP had its way, this family would only save $6.01. Bus fare alone for the family, if both parents worked, would be much more. Although the savings is small for this family, Fiji First says the zero ratings of 23 items by the NFP will accumulate into a massive VAT loss for the government of around $300 million. Fiji First says this will result in reduced revenue, meaning the government will have less to spend on current social wages such as free education, free bus fare, subsidized water and electricity and social welfare benefits. It says the government will have less to spend on crucial infrastructure developments such as roads, bridges and new utility connections. Fiji First also claims the NFP will have to lower the tax threshold and tax more people in order to make the shortfall for this promises. Fijians earning up to $30,000 per annum currently pay zero tax. Fiji First says the Fijian public is better off with the current government because prior to their policies, an average Fijian residing in Suva spent $15 on bus fare from Nasinu to the city, from $60 for school fees a term, water bills at $15 for three months, and from $50 a month for electricity, a total of $140. After the Fiji First Government subsidies on these, the same person now pays $55.50, saving $84.50 a month or $21 a week. The next week will definitely be a battle for hearts and minds as all political parties try and convince the voters about the benefits of their own policies. Rachel Nau, FBC News. In his second and final term, President Major General Retired Chiochi Konusi Kondrote was sworn into office today for a term of three years. The President took the oath of office with Chief Justice Anthony Gates administering the official swearing in. Prior to the swearing in at Barron House, the official ceremony also included a warrant of appointment that was read out by Speaker of the House, Dr. Chico Luveni. I, Chiochi Konusi Kondrote, Swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Fiji according to law, and that I will obey, observe, uphold, and maintain the Constitution of the Republic of Fiji and all other laws of Fiji, and I will devote myself to the well being of the Republic of Fiji and all Fijians, protect and promote their rights, and well and truly serve the Republic of Fiji in the office of the President. So help me God. Still to come, Immigration Department issues 97 removal orders and couple found in possession of drugs seek bail. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wangarong and Bula Fip, Nambandu, I am a serie. I have a wash it size, a lambasa, and the Teleta in the Warong and Bula Fem, Nambandu and Serie. We have a Tumeli, a Kona Tauno Hinatoka, Teleta Kina Navarong and Bula Fem, Nambandu and a serie. Never go fun in a town and go sing a toka, get on the Teleta Kanambula Fem, Nambandu and a serie. Bula Fem, Nambandu and a serie. Ninety-seven removal orders were issued by the Department of Immigration last year, one of the highest in the past five years. 
Director of Immigration Emani Vuniwanga confirms a majority were Chinese nationals, while others included Pakistan, Afghanistan and other nationals. Savaratambo reports. The Department of Immigration strengthened its operation last year to identify and remove those who are overstaying in our country. We would have been working on um, information received and um, for those that have overstayed or have breached the terms and conditions and then the uh, removal orders will be initiated. But uh, 2017 we conducted an internal exercise whereby we looked at the database and identified those that are in the country that are not supposed to be because of the fact that they have overstayed. In 2016, a total of 52 removal orders were issued, 77 in 2015, 35 in 2014, and 26 in 2013. Some of them uh, on a tourist visa, uh, some had um, uh, Chinese nationals, most of them that came in on a tourist visa, where they were, where they were given like uh, four months and then they overstayed. After the fourth month, they did not regularize the permit, they did not. Uh, come to the department to, um, to extend the, the, the permit, but rather state. Some, uh, from, uh, some also on, on uh, work permits, they had overstayed their work permits. The department is working in partnership with the law enforcement agencies to identify these overstayers. Once caught, they are kept at remand centers while their flights are arranged and finalized. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. A couple alleged to have been in possession of more than 416 grams of methamphetamine have applied for bail at the Suva Magistrates Court. Lambert Kurvoli and Alena Rongo are jointly charged with one count each of unlawful importation of illicit drugs, while Rongo faces an additional count of unlawful possession of illicit drugs. It is alleged the two imported the illicit drugs on September 10th and October 13th. The initial discovery was made by a customs officer at the Nandi International Airport when a suspicious package arrived from the United States containing items for a baby. The matter has been adjourned to next Thursday and the duo have been further remanded. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights sets out values and a common standard for everyone around the world. With this year being the 70th anniversary for the Declaration, United Nations Human Rights Regional Representative Dr. Messi believes more needs to be done. Kelly Vavella reports. A strong human rights system contributes to the health of our communities, families and workplaces by supporting a society that values belonging and security for all. Seventy years after continue to be as relevant today as they were 70 years ago. And what's astonishing for possibly the younger generation is this, that 70 years after saying we wanted this to be the reality for our lives, we are still struggling to, to say we've done it. Pacific Islands Development Forum Team Leader Program Management Mark Borg adds it's crucial to also look at the rights of others. And we don't defend human rights only when they affect us personally. We defend them when they affect others as well. Very important. Because by the time we let slip human rights of other people, then these human rights are going to affect us eventually as well. People are still being discriminated. People are still being stigmatized for who they are. The theme for the year-long celebration is the sun rising on the next seven decades for human rights. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Out of 1,500 hopefuls, Daphne Mbalewambu is the luckiest of the lot, scoring the win for Gold FM's much sought-after Queen of Country Pop Shania Twain competition. A return ticket for two to New Zealand, a thousand New Zealand dollars in spending money, and two tickets to Shania's concert is a Christmas come early for the Mbalewambu family. The four-month competition is the third for Gold FM, with previous winners enjoying Lionel Richie and Celine Dion in concert. But Daphne, who's taking her nine-year-old daughter with her on their first overseas trip, says the win is still sinking in. Oh, my gosh. I got home and my son passed on the message and I couldn't believe it. I said to myself, I have to hear it. I have to hear it from somebody at FBC. And Kara called in the afternoon and that, oh, my gosh, is it for real? More than 2,000 Diwali sweet packs were distributed by the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation staff in the central, western and northern divisions today. FBC team leader events Ruby Solanke says the aim was to distribute sweets to as many Fijians as possible. Solanke says it was also a great time to spread good cheer, promote the 
upcoming competition on Mirchi FM and brand the six radio stations. The public are ex actually expecting us to do this because a couple of vehicles have actually stopped and uh, said, look, we love what you're doing. Thank you, FBC. And it's, it's a good feeling. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Fijians continue to shine in top 14 competition. But before that, here's Rachel with all the day's business updates. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Diwali Festival begins with Denteras. And in growing Fiji, Agro Marketing Authority opens new collection centre. Stay with us. Viola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigai, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classics. Leading business tonight, Hindus are celebrating Dhanteras today, a Hindu festival which is marked two days before Diwali. Hindus consider today an extremely auspicious day to mark to make new purchases, especially gold and silver articles and new utensils. Sanya Nimboila reports. Dan Terrace marks the beginning of the five-day festivities of Diwali. And many people were out and about doing their purchase to mark the auspicious occasion. They come and do the shopping, they buy the place, the basin, for the lot, do the plate and the container, you know, like this. Wednesday is our Diwali, so we have to make and help my mom. So we came to shopping. We sang about Danteras that we do a lot of lot in Danteras. Eh? We're buying the plates or dishes like that. With consumer spending increasing, the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission is continuously receiving complaints from consumers. Chief Executive Joel Abraham one. confirms some traders will be charged soon. Eight of them have been... Uh, singled aside and they are under active investigations and uh, FCCC expects to lay charges should we find that uh, these traders have been violating. Meanwhile, consumers are also urged to refrain from engaging in last minute shopping but rather to plan out their shopping and stick to a budget. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the exchange market. Let's look at our South Pacific Stock Exchange Market Review for last week. Seven of the listed stocks recorded trade, noting various share price movements. Fiji Care Insurance Limited shares recorded a $0.05 cents growth, ending the week at $1.50. Contiki Finance Limited shares closed at $1, noting a $0.06 cents fall. Paradise Beverages Limited fell by $0.50 cents to close the week at $12.50. Toyota Susho South Sea Limited shares rose by $0.97 cents to close at $7. Fijian Holdings Limited shares rose by $0.50 cents and ended the week at a share price of $7. Following these price movements, the overall market capitalization increased by 0.32%, ending the week at $2.78 billion. That's the wrap from our local stock market, Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. It was a mixed day for the Fiji dollar against the currencies we deal with. The Fiji dollar rose against the Australian, New Zealand and the Japanese yen. It slipped against the other currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, oil continues to fall, closing at $62.98 a barrel. Gold rose to close at $1,233 an ounce and silver closed at $1,474 an ounce. And in Green Fiji tonight, farmers and fishermen of Bua now have a new market at their doorstep to sell produce. Agro Marketing Authority recently opened the new collection centre. Eleanor Tarangaviu reports. Securing a sustainable market is often a challenge for fishermen and farmers in the rural and remote communities. For villagers in Lekututu, Kumbulau in Bua, this will no longer be the case. 
This new facility we are opening here is part of services provided by the Ministry of Agriculture and is to support farmers and fishermen particularly when it comes to marketing their goods. This is the second agro-marketing authority collection center to be established in Vonolevu. Previously, AMA serviced Vonolevu from its office in Savu Savu. The progress of this facility will depend on what is achieved here. I hope that there will be plans by the officers here to expand this facility in the years to come. AMA now hopes that with this new facility there will be a consistent supply of produce to meet demand. There is a need to, for communities to understand that when we uh, uh, secure markets, there needs to be consistency of supply of produce to be able to uh, meet the demands of uh, the markets that are secured. And that is one of the challenges that we have faced uh, in the past and we continue to face. AMA currently buys ndalo and cassava as well as fish and mud crabs. Vegetables is next on the list. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. And Punter is eager for the race that stops the nation. There's some more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock in Lombasa. I'm Sona Men, Osori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm a bubble singer line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson, Osori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Osori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Paul and Rani Sinukula and Aminoni Nasila Sila have been ruled out of the national squad that will compete at the Oceania Sevens Tournament in Suba this weekend due to injuries. However, season reps Jerry Tuwai, Chosua Wakurunambili, Waisea Nadungu, Sevuloni Modenadangi and Vate Mo Robovou are all in the squad, captained by Kalioni Nasoko. The team has pulled alongside PNG and the Solomon Islands in Pule of the Oceania Sevens. Meanwhile, the Fiji men's and women's development teams that will compete in the Oita Sevens in Japan departed this morning. Fiji-born Tomasi Dama says while he loves his home country, every time he represented New Zealand in a match against Fiji, his only focus was to win. Dama, who is also a former New Zealand Sevens captain, adds that his focus definitely hasn't changed now as assistant coach for the New Zealand Sevens team. I guess no different when I was playing. You know, I, I used to go through a lot in, in my head. Um, even when I was here, when I live here, I, you know, playing against other Fijian teams, you, I'm proud of who I am and proud to be Fijian. We've been preparing at home, um, in, obviously in New Zealand, and it'll be good to come here next week, uh, playing the Oceania Sevens and you know, get a bit of some sore body before the World Series start. You can see now, you know, it's a hard road, so uh, I think it's exciting. There's still, you know, Fiji, New Zealand, South Africa, you know, all the teams are consistently good. The Oceania Sevens Championship begins this Friday and ends on Saturday at Suvas Inns Stadium. Fiji is in Pule alongside PNG and Solomon Islands, while New Zealand is pulled with New Caledonia and Nauru in Pool B. Melitabanga, FBC Sports. Fijians Aliveretti Raka, Pede Liato and Noa Nakaita, the all found the try line for their clubs in France this morning. Meli Tavanga with more from the top 14 rugby competition. After an impressive performance in Clermont's 41-6 win over Castres last week, Aliveretti Raka and Pede Liato showed their worth again in their 27-all match against Grenoble FC this morning. Meanwhile, Fiji-born winger Noana Kaitadi scored a try for Lyon as they hammered Stade Francais 41-6 this morning.
After round 9 of the competition, Clermont extends its lead to 32 points. Toulouse is on second place with 29, while Stade Francais rounds up top 3 with 27 points. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Grants Bidding Limited anticipates a large number of punters to try their luck at its various outlets tomorrow for the Melbourne Cup, referred to by horse racing pundits as the big one. The Australian $7.3 million race is set to get Fijians scrambling to place their bets from tomorrow morning. Meli Tavanga reports. Local punters are already rushing to the Grants betting house to place their bets on their favorite horses for the race that stops the nation. When you look at the Fiji, the crowd, the Panthers in Fiji, uh, and, and the people, that, the newcomers especially, you know, uh, they, they love to place the small amount of bets, $1, $2, $5, they, they, they have their bets. And after that, they go and watch the uh, race on the TV at home or at workplace. Operations manager Vijendra Sundar says there is more hype after the final field was confirmed. Although uh, Diwali is always Wednesday, People, they are coming here, they are taking the fields, that means there is a lot of interest in the Melbourne Cup. FBC Sports also spoke to a few punters to ask them about their favourite horses. Lucatan. Lucatan. Lucatan is my best bet. And the other one is uh, cross, cross Counter. For number 17, the Prince of Aran, and number 23, Cross Counter. Best solution. Best solution. Can you give me a reason why you do it? Well, I like it, the race kicks off at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. The Kiwi Rugby League team is reeling after suffering back-to-back -back defeats against England, this time in controversial circumstances. The Kiwis and England will now head to Leeds for the third and final test on November 12th. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and the new media. Apple confirms it will throttle phones because of degrading batteries. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, Radio Fiji One, Viti. New media tonight, Apple's throttling comes to iPhones that are only a year old. Apple says they wouldn't, but iOS 12.1 adds the controversial performance management feature to some of Apple's newest iPhones. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope your weekend was amazing as the weekend weather was excellent for shopping, house cleaning and perfecting everything for the joyous occasion. The great spell of sunshine well into today as well. I absolutely loved it and hope you did too. Taking a look in the west, quite mild. The sun was glowing with a rising humidity level. Amazing sight out here. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Siva, it was cool with slight sunshine. And up north, quite the same, there hasn't been any rain so far. At sea, easterly winds 20 to 25 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 12.50 a.m. Sunrise at 6.25. For tomorrow, it's Diwali Eve and we also have bands of rain clouds circulating. But I won't dull your mood or anything, let's just say there will be few light sprinkles. Tomorrow's stamps, most centers will be moderate, so more reason to shop around. And looking further on to Wednesday, rain clouds once again moving towards us, but there is nothing major to worry about. And it's back to the stunning Jackie. Thanks so much, stunning Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, will you dress up for Melbourne Cup tomorrow? I think I will cross dress between Melbourne Cup and Diwali a bit. With Diwali and Melbourne Cup, I'll be dressing up a bit of both. I will be okay tomorrow, but we'll not dress up. We'll wait for the uh, Melbourne Cup. I have to think about that. The time is too short. As everybody is going for the Diwali, celebrating Diwali. I will not dress up, but I'm looking forward to the Melbourne Cup tomorrow. I think I'll miss out because I'll be going to Lombasa tomorrow morning. 
recapping the main stories for tonight, Fiji First Leader rules out Sidelpa Coalition. Election pre-polls begin around Fiji and police tells people to stop rumour mongering. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, last week we had asked, should more focus be put on local players following the Fijian Brewers NRC win? 86% said yes. This week we're asking, are you prepared to pay your house help and gardener $5 an hour? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day sent in by Aseli Tamani from Nangaindamu village on Koro Island. The shot was taken from Mount Delaikandi. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. My Navneet Nan, Nambu Alumbua, is like the Freni North. मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंह टोकर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देश के रग्बी फेम में से वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू फेम में से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की